let's start with what happened on the floor last night. The Brooklyn Nets, somehow, some way, on the heels, on the shoulders of all things Kevin Durant, coming back from big, big deficits to beat the Milwaukee Bucks. Durant, guys, was just outrageous. Had about 100 fantasy points, and that's flexed. Never mind if you captain him in a showdown. He was outrageous. Brooklyn is up. 3-2 now, Jules, in this series. What did KD's performance last night with the 49-17-10 and 10 do for his, uh, you know, your overall thoughts on the series, but also odds on the DK Sportsbook for this team? Yeah, so I was ready to talk about how it kind of changed the landscape in the Eastern Conference. And then we get this morning that makes KD's, like, all-time historic Game 5, like the third largest news story in, in the NBA. <laughs> yeah. Uh, and now Durant's game literally impacts the entire uh, the entire championship board. Um, Chris Paul will see. You know he's obviously praying for the Clippers and the Jazz to to split these next two games and buy himself a couple more days so that he can get on the floor potentially for a game one or game two of the Western Conference Final. And then you have Kawhi Leonard. Uh, it doesn't sound good. He's out game five. He's out indefinitely. He Usually when it sounds like that, he's probably not going to be able to return for this series. We'll see about the next round if the Clippers can somehow pull this out. So, yeah, the impact of all these things combined. Uh, title odds just reopened, you know, before recording, you know, late morning on the East Coast. Uh, the Western Conference is still shut down, but the the Nets are plus 200 favorites to win it all, followed by, I mean, if you've got a Utah Jazz in the West ticket, uh, you just had a heck of a morning. <laughs> Jazz plus 250 to, to win it all. The Suns were around plus 375. They moved down to plus 450. Clippers plummet to plus 1,000. Um, it's about as wild as it can get in, in terms of a morning for, for the NBA, but the one part that I do want to say, you know, the Nets gutted out that game. They still have to find a way to win another game in this series and win four more against a good Sixers team or an exciting Hawks team. And Harden's laboring through some stuff. Durant's going to be tough to replicate that performance many times. Kyrie, that ankle looked really bad. We'll see if he can potentially play in an Eastern Conference final. There, I, there have never been this many moving parts trying to handicap the NBA um, in one single time. Speaking of moving parts, Jules, just as you were talking, we have more breaking news from the NBA. Scott Brooks is out in Washington. So that is another team that needs a new head coach. Uh, so, Nick, let's go with you. Talk more about KD. So do you agree with what Reggie Miller tweeted last night? Maybe just sit hard and sit Durant for game six, put all your chips in for a game seven and, and be as fully healthy as you can be? Uh, no, I do not agree with Reggie Miller, <laughs> believe it or not. Uh, and I was, I was listening to the Bill Simmons pod this morning, and he kind of echoed the same thing. He thought they should oh. sit Harden in game six as well. I mean, Reggie took it to another level saying they should sit, sit Kevin Durant. But it, it does seem like, despite how pathetic of a performance this was by the Milwaukee Bucks last night, that there is still a decent amount of optimism that the Bucks are going to win game six. And I think that's fueled by the fact that James Harden's hamstring is probably going to be extremely sore. James Harden also didn't look good for most of last night. He made some nice passes had some nice defensive stands given his limitations. But I mean, for the most part, there's an argument to be made that the Nets would have been better off not having James Harden, uh, at least on the offensive end, uh, based on how he shot the ball last night. Uh, but again, I mean, for as great of a performance as this was for Kevin Durant, it was exactly, I think, what people wanted to see from him after like four straight years of Durant playing on a stack team, never really having the odds against him and, and being in this position. It was awesome to see. I mean, as a KD fan, it was it was exactly what you wanted from Kevin Durant. But for me, like the bigger story is just how the Bucks let this game slip away from them. I mean, you can, there's been plenty of times where a superstar goes for 40 plus points in a loss because there are no other options. And, and there was really nothing that, you know, the Nets had no other options, but for Kevin Durant to have a game like this. And if the Bucks play even semi below average offense in the second half, they still probably win this game uh, relatively comfortably, but they just completely shut it down and they would run, you know, one screen and roll. And if it didn't result in a layup, then whoever has the ball is going one-on-one -on -one and chucking up a contested mid-range shot. Uh, I, I was really disappointed um, not only in, in Giannis and Middleton, who I think took the brunt of the criticism last night, but I thought Drew Holiday looked a lot like Eric Bledsoe. I, I mean, he's the guy that's supposed to calm everybody down uh, make sure they get good shots, back it out. You know, if, if things are out of control. And I thought he was the worst defender of all with some of his decision-making down the stretch so you know the, the main storyline is katie's incredible he's the best player in the league right now but equally so i think this was an extremely winnable game and an extremely winnable series that was served on a platter 
to the Milwaukee Bucks, and they just could not take advantage. 